Hi, I'm Bob with JD Squared. Thanks for tuning in. This is an instructional video for the XR series rotary cutters and we're going to be talking about the automatic round tube stabilizer. First of all, the purpose of this video is to try to provide you with every piece of information you could possibly ever want to know about stabilizers. So we'll be talking about the principle of operation, how to put it in the machine the first time and set it up so that you could rapidly take it in and out of the machine later. And then we will also cut some parts that you could actually see it operating. Now, <clears throat> the capacities of the automatic round tube stabilizer are three and a half inch OD tubing or three inch pipe. It has transfer balls inside it that will automatically engage onto your tubing in order to support the material while it's being cut. However, when you're not cutting, we retract the transfer balls off of the material, and what that does, that helps, elim uh, not eliminate, but pretty much minimize marring of the tubing while we're wrapping up and down the machine. So, <clears throat> the best way to describe to you the principle of operation is to, you know, look inside. So, without further ado, let's open this thing up. I've gone ahead and removed the cover so you can see the inner workings. And if you notice, we have a cylinder right here, an air cylinder. And what it's going to do is it's going to actuate the transfer balls from half inch up to three and a half inch. The principle of operation is that when you got your tubing in the machine, when the, when the cylinder, <laughs> when the cylinder actuate, it's going to clamp down on the tubing like this. So it's out, it's in, right? You're cutting. Now they're only active while you are actually cutting or marking. If you're not cutting, they're going to retract off of the part. Now the reason we want to retract them off the part is two reasons. One, the, the XR series of machines rapid pretty fast. I think it's 800 inches a minute currently. If you start dragging a transfer ball across a tube at 800 inches a minute, the odds are you're going to mar that tubing, especially if you're working with a polished stainless steel or something like that. The other problem is to you greatly um, increase the wear of the transfer balls because you know they're dragging under load the whole time. So the idea is with the automatic stabilizer, we're cutting, so we clamp down on the tube of the transfer balls. When we're done cutting our operation, we retract off and that will allow the tube to drop onto this aluminum roller right here. Now you adjust the aluminum roller after you put your workpiece into the machine and you want to adjust it so that it's just below the tube so that when the transfer balls retract they fall onto that aluminum roller but not a very large distance I'm talking like you know a millimeter you know sixteenth of an inch or something like that so it's a very small amount that they will drop down and that will then allow us to go full speed alrighty so let's talk about the um, the, the adjuster bolts right here. The only one that is very, very common is the bottom bolt. And what it does is, I'm gonna back it off a little bit here so I can show you a little bit better. It's going to determine how far open the transfer balls are. So if I come along and I start turning it in, you see the transfer balls closing down? The reason we want that adjustment is, let's just say for instance, we're gonna be cutting one inch aluminum tube, relatively soft metal, right? You do not want these transfer balls to get that kind of run on the tubing. So you don't want them adjusted out to three and a half inches because what they're gonna do is they're going to, boom, they're gonna hit that tube pretty hard. Now on the machine, there, are, there is a regulator to where you could adjust the pressure down if you wanted to for more ductile, softer materials. However, the best way to do it or a better way to do it is leave the pressure up and just don't let the transfer balls get a run. You want to, you know, if it's out here, you can see where it could really build us a speed, hit it hard, but if it's real close, it can't do it. That's the purpose of this bolt right here. So I would literally adjust this down to where it's, the bottom line is in the retract position, it's only maybe a 16th of an inch, eighth inch tops off of the part. Now you do that when you load it up into the machine and I'll be showing you all this when we actually put it in the machine over there. So that's what the bottom bolt does, that's your main bolt. What about the top bolt? All right, let's say we wanna cut something real heavy. We have a three and a half inch OD, but you wanna cut like a half inch wall piece of three and a half inch tubing. The automatic stabilizer 
is not going to like that. It's just too much weight if it's at the other end. So let's just say it's in the machine, you load up a 20 foot stick of metal and you run the gantry all the way to the end of the machine. This bolts onto the gantry. You'll see that in a little while. Well, it's carrying half of the weight of that tubing. Well, there's only so much power that a pneumatic cylinder can put out. So what we've done is we've given you the op the option of basically turning it into a non-automatic stabilizer by adjusting this to where it won't open up very, you know, won't open up very far. It's pretty much lightly riding on the tubing. And then we turn this in and what that will do is that will lock the whole mechanism up so the automatic stabilizer or the cylinder will no longer be effective at all. That's the idea. Um, I've only seen that happen once in like the last two years, so it's not that big of a deal. If you're going to work with material that big and that heavy, um, sometimes it's better to go to our roller system, which is a subject of another video. XRs are super um, versatile, got a lot of attachments for them for different operations. But anyway, that is the principle of operation. Our next thing Let's just go ahead and put it into the machine. I'll show you how to line it up, set it up. And if you noticed, we have the structural stabilizer is in the machine. So you're actually going to see how long does it take for me to put this stabilizer into that machine. You're going to be shocked. It's pretty fast. All right, so let's get after that. Okay, here we are at the XR12. And if you've noticed, we've got our structural stabilizer. We were cutting a, you know, a bunch of these pieces of angle iron right here. So we have a previous setup. Now we want to go and we want to cut some tubing. Let's just say we're doing railing. Let's say we're in the stair business and we were cutting our structural steel for the uh, structure of the stairs. Now we want to do the railing. So we need to put in our round tube stabilizer. First thing I'm going to do is, um, let's see what time it is. All right, let's see how long it takes us roughly to do this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take out the workpiece right here. We'll remove that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a 19 millimeter socket or a three quarter inch socket also works. All of our XR series machines are metric. Um, so just keep that in mind. Anyway, the stabilizer is mounted into the machine using two bolts, one on each wing. So we're going to remove the rear one first. The reason I like to remove the rear one first is because she's going to try to tilt on us. When we, when we try to take it out. So we've got our, our bolt and nut right here. We'll set it right here. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pop this one off also. You see it, see it trying to tilt right there? So I'm kind of holding it a little bit. And let's take it out. So we remove the structural stabilizer. Let's grab our round tube stabilizer. Whoops. I'm doing this because, like I said, I'm trying to be as complete as, as possible. I want to show you as much as you could possibly need to know. So what we're going to do, we're going to drop it down. I'm, going to, I'm just going to temporarily put the nut. I'm not going to tighten it up yet. Let's go to the back. Put this one in also. All righty. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. Okay. We've got the stabilizer in. We are now going to take our two tubes and we're going to come over here and there are two, um, in fact, let me position the camera show you a little bit better. Let me just whip, move this over for you. Let's see, okay. All righty, so right here is the stabilizer regulator. This is where you're going to adjust the pressure up or down. We normally leave it up around 100 pound, 100 PSI, 110 in that ballpark. Right here, we have its Mark tube stabilizer. There are two push to connect pneumatic connectors, and we're going to place our tubes in them. Now, we have got them marked one and two. The reason we mark them is so that they operate in the correct direction, and I'll show you what's going to happen. Now, if we come along, in order to use these push connects, you're going to push in and you're going to pull out. All right? You don't hear any air right there, right? Now, supposing you did hear air blowing out, like let's just do it on the bottom. You hear that right there? Just go to the automatic stabilizer right here and move it into the auto position, and that will switch it to the other air. Now, we've got our tubes marked one and two, so we are going to put in two on the bottom. 
I'm going to go ahead and flip the switch back because I know that this is now going to leak up here. Pull that one out. I plug that one in. All I've got to do now is we've got it in the machine. We just need to slide the stabilizer back, push it that away, zing down our bolts here. There it and that's it. We are now ready. Now, obviously, we'd have to take that out, you know, to get more. <laughs> let me play back the camera up here for a minute. All right, let's see if I did that right. Um, okay, so now we've got the stabilizer in the machine. Obviously, we'd have to remove this in order to cut tubing. It's that simple. We're ready to cut. I can now load up my tubing, chuck it into the chuck, and go ahead and make my adjusters using my bolts here, and I'm ready to go. I'm cutting round tube. Very, very fast, very, very simple. All right, let's go ahead and back up a little bit. We're gonna take it back out of the machine so that I can now show you how to set it up. I know I just said I was gonna take it back out of the machine. Turns out, since we already had a structural stabilizer in the machine, I'm able to show you what I was gonna show you by taking it out. And what that is, is this, this little plate right here. See that little square plate right there with the two bolts on it? That is our bump stop plate. Let me get this out of the way. <coughs> and it resides on this side of the stabilizer. And what its purpose is, is once we've lined up the stabilizer left to right with the chuck, we can take that plate, slide it back against the frame, lock it down. Now, every time we load the stabilizer, we no longer have to make that adjustment. We just load it like I showed you earlier and go. So let's go ahead and let me show you how to do that. We're gonna go ahead using a 15 millimeter socket we're gonna loosen up those plate bolts, that little square plate I was talking about. Then we're gonna switch over to our 19 millimeter or three quarter socket. And I'm very lightly gonna loosen up these bolts here because remember I mentioned earlier that it wants to tilt. So what I did is I ran it out and then I just used my fingers to bring it back up just a little bit to take the play out. We'll do the same thing back here. Alrighty, there you go. Now, the stabilizer is now, you can see it's pretty much we're moving this thing all over the place. We need to line it up with the chuck. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna reposition the camera so you can see hopefully what we're doing a little bit better and we'll, we'll do that operation. We're gonna be making two adjustments. We're gonna be adjusting the stabilizer left or right as I mentioned earlier and we also have to adjust the chuck up or down so that it aligns with the center line of the stabilizer. Now I put out another video earlier called, um, it's a, like an overview of stabilizers. I think I talk about four or five different stabilizers in that video. Please watch that video because it'll give you an idea of what stabilizer you're gonna use to, for what job. It also talks about some of the commonalities and those commonalities happen to be the way you adjust it, like we're talking about right here. Now, the one thing we've done here, the majority of tube work is less than four inches square and three and a half inch round. That's why we, we pretty much chose those um, limits for our stabilizers. Having said that, we do not want to be adjusting the chuck up or down every time we change us from the round tube stabilizer to the square tube stabilizer. So the round tube stabilizer, this one, and the square tube stabilizer have the same center height in relation to the chuck. So you can, if you're cutting, let's say, two by two square, you could pop that bad boy out pop in your round tube stabilizer and never touch the chuck. You only adjust the chuck up or down for specific stabilizers. For instance, in that video, we talk about the fixed plate stabilizer. It's a very large stabilizer. It cuts up to like 12 by 12 inch square. Well, that stabilizer, there's no way we can have it on the same center line as a round tube, so it's higher. So you have to raise the chuck up. So what we're gonna do here since those are the two most popular ones, the, the round tube and the square tube stabilizer, we are gonna adjust the chuck to that height. Now, let's just say you are doing work where you're going between the structural stabilizer and, the, and like what we just did right here. A couple things need to be done. We're gonna to need to relocate the chuck up or down for sure, and we're also going to need to change our limit switch. There's a, a, the way I adjust the limit switch back there, because when we were cutting that structural, we had the limit switch set for structural. Now we need to set the limit switch so that we can um, bring the gantry all the way to the chuck, so keep that in mind. Now adjusting the limit switch is covered in another video. Super, super simple, but it's its own video. So the first thing we need to do is, like right now, for instance, since we were cutting structural, this is what I was showing you. 
I can only go to this, I can't come any further back than this. So what I did, I went behind the machine and I broke loose the limit switch adjuster right here and I'm gonna go over here to home. And I'm gonna home the Y axis. Now I got a stop button on the screen, I can stop it any time I want because we obviously do not want it to run into the chuck. But we wanted to get it fairly close to the chuck. Let's go ahead and stop right there. We're about a half an, an inch out. So now I can go back behind the machine back here real quick and lock down that limit switch. Bear with me for one second, please, while I do that. I'm back here. <laughs> We use a 19 millimeter wrench. It's a very simple thing to do. And all I've done is I've pulled the limit switch, the bump stop, to the limit switch. All righty, I'm almost got it. Let me lock it down really snug. You really want to tighten these up pretty good. All righty. All right, there we go. All right, let's go ahead and move the machine or the gantry. This is the gantry. Let's move it away from out that a little bit and then let's just rehome that axis again. There you go. We're home. Now we're set up for do this or, or for this operation. Let's go ahead and move this out. In case you're wondering, the machine has three speeds. I'll tell you that real quick. You hold down the arrow keys or whatever map you want to be using. I like the arrow keys. This is slow speed, medium speed, fast speed. All right, let's fast speed is uh, I didn't tell you what keys. Shift arrow is medium, control shift is fast. Okay, we moved it away. We've got ourselves a piece of round tube here. I like this tube, it's a good high quality piece of tube. I'm gonna place it into the chuck. Now, you don't want it, it doesn't need to hang out a long, long ways because we're moving the stabilizer very close to it anyway. So let's go ahead and lock that down. Okay. Let me mention something real quick um, about these things right here. Do not leave them in the chuck because if the, this thing has got a tremendous amount of power and if you leave the chuck key in the chuck and she rotates and hits something, it's going to snap the belt inside there. So what we have done here, if you've already got our XR12, thank you by the way, we've just procured a bunch of these self-ejecting keys so that you cannot accidentally do that. So. Um, We'll be sending them out to you as we get more and more in, and it's a free, it's a free upgrade. It's something we should have probably done day one, but you know, it is what it is. So um, if you're watching this, you know, you can even email us, hey, can I get my key? And that'll bump you right up on the list. That's just the way we roll here. If we make a change in a machine, a lot of times you'll get free parts in the mail. All right, let's go ahead. We've got this up or down. Now what we need to do is kind of break the, the chuck loose move it up or down so that we can adjust that. Let me go ahead and reposition the camera to the back of the machine so that I could show you that operation. We're at the back of the machine right here, and if you notice, we've got a couple of nuts that are exposed, and then we have a couple of nuts that have black caps pushed on them. You never remove the black cap nuts. Their purpose is when we remove or loosen these two lower nuts, what's gonna happen is the chuck's gonna get loose and it would wanna fall out of the machine if we didn't have these nuts up here to prevent that from happening. So you're only gonna be working with the two nuts that you can see. Take your 19 millimeter um, wrench or whatever and loosen them up. And you don't need to take them off, you just, you just wanna loosen them. Like that right there. Now the chuck is adjustable up or down. You will use a 30 millimeter wrench and there's a large nut down here. And this is what you're gonna adjust up and down to get the chuck to go, um, get it to the right height. So let's go back to the front of the machine and actually do this adjusting. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lower down the aluminum V-roller here. We're gonna use an eight millimeter hex key and these things we tighten up pretty tight. So um, you're gonna want to use something that you get a little bit of leverage on because remember, it's gonna carry the weight of your tubing and the only thing that's gonna hold it up is to how tight you tighten that bolt down. Now there are three different adjustments on this V-roller. You just pick the one that is better for what you're doing. You'll, you'll see why here in a little while. So we've lowered that. Let's go ahead, bring the machine back. We'll slow down right here. 
probably be a good idea for me to get my tool out of the way here. Let's go ahead and bring it on back. And what we want to do is we want to see a little bit of the tube coming out of this side of the stabilizer. You don't need to see a lot. Now, in reality, probably the closer to the chuck you can get is the best because you don't want that, if that tube's got a little bit of a bend in it, you don't want it hanging up. Now, let me make an observation here real quick. None of this stuff is super, super critical. You gotta remember, we're cutting plasma. Even though this machine is ungodly accurate, we're talking like one ten thousandths resolution, we're still cutting with plasma. So if you weren't exactly perfect, you know, if you're off 20, 30 thou, it's not really gonna affect much, but hey, let's try to get it right if we can. All right, so we've got our tubing stuck out. What we need to do now is engage, go over here to this switch here, and we're gonna go automatic. Now you're gonna hear a loud clank. That clank, that is the stabilizer grabbing hold of the tubing. Now, we can't really move the stabilizer left and right, that tube's got it. So what we're looking at here is since we've done that, we're gonna look at the back of the machine and we're looking for daylight on the rollers. And what we wanna do is by adjusting the chuck up or down a little bit, and then also having the, um, the thing clamped on it left or right, that's how we're gonna do it. Now, we can go ahead now that we've clamped it and we are gonna lightly tighten the bolts. We're not gonna super tighten them, just lightly. And the idea being is we wanna make sure that the stabilizer is engaged onto the frame because if those transfer balls grab the tube and your chuck is a little bit too high, it will lift the stabilizer up. So we don't want that. So let me go here to the other side and I will slightly snug this one down. All righty, that's good. Now I'm gonna come around, look over here and I'm looking at the back of the machine and what I'm looking at, looking for, is daylight. So if the top transfer ball, for instance, has daylight in it, well, that means you have to raise the chuck up. And then once you do that, you will finally get all the balls locked in. Now, once you've got them locked in to where, hey, they've, all three balls are evenly in contact, you're gonna go around to the back of the machine and you're gonna retighten down your chuck. Now, the reason I'm not having to adjust the chuck up or down now is because even with the structural steel stabilizer, I designed that so that it pretty much is close to the center line height anyway, and you don't have to adjust the chuck. I'm really trying to keep the setup time to a minimal. So I did not have to adjust this up or down, but I'm, I'm sure you get the idea that just by adjusting the chuck up or down, left or right, you will get all three balls to engage. Now, once you do that, go ahead, tighten down tighten down the chuck, tighten down the, the bolts that are hold, holding the stabilizer in place, like right here. Alrighty, let me put my eight millimeter Kex V back into the tray. Alrighty, and there you go, we've got it. So, now the next adjustment. We're gonna retract the balls off of the machine. Let me see, yeah. Now I will take a couple pictures to show you the pictures of what's going on. Now what we need to do is we need to adjust the lower bolt. Remember that's the one that we're gonna to adjust to determine how far out the transfer balls go. And to do that, I can literally look in here. <laughs> Probably better to look in this side over here. And you're gonna to have to cycle this here. And what I like to do is I turn it all the way in and then I back it off one turn. Now I look at it. If you notice, listen to the sound. Very, very slight, right? Because we're not slamming them transfer balls into it. So I open it up, I look at it. I'm very happy where it's at. Now I'm gonna take a 19 millimeter or three quarter and I'm gonna tighten up the jam nut to lock that thing in place because we don't want it loosening while we're operating. All right, the next thing we need to do is adjust that V-roller up or down. So I'll take my 19 millimeter key. Now I really, really need a longer piece of tubing. So you know what? Let's wait to adjust that because I can't really get in there. And we're gonna go ahead and let's put a piece of tube in the machine and actually cut some metal so you can see the final, the final deal. Alrighty, let me get after it. 
I've gone and got a piece of two inch pipe here that we're actually gonna cut a part out. So let's go ahead and remove our setup tube out of the machine. And I'll just set it right here for now. Now we have to go ahead and place this in. Now I've opened up the, the transfer balls, but if you go to put in the tube into the, into the stabilizer and it won't go in, first of all, we may need to move it a little bit further away. All righty. If it won't go in, what that means is the transfer balls have been adjusted too far down. So we're going to want to back off the lower bolt. Now, right now, when I went to do it by my hand, I can't do it, which tells me it's loaded, it's down. So let's go ahead and unload it. Like I told you, it's pretty powerful. Just kick that tube out of there. Now I can unscrew this. I'm gonna unscrew it, go back to my switch, switch back to the open mode. Now I should be able to slide her in. Yeah, there you go. Let's go ahead and open up the chuck right here. Now when I chuck up tubing, I generally only chuck it up about a half inch into the chuck. I don't wanna to go too doggone far. Um, I just wanna grab the end pretty good. So let's tighten it up a little bit. Now I can come over here, go back into auto mode, which will close the transfer balls down onto the tube. Now I can adjust my bottom bolt. Once again, I'm gonna run it all the way in and then I'm gonna back it out just about one turn. I'm gonna go back to the open mode with the, the the switch over here, you can't see me, I'm out of the camera because I had to extend out. Um, in fact, let me move the chuck back, or the gantry back a little bit closer to the chuck so you can see. Alrighty, I believe you can see now, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna go to the switch right, <laughs> a little bit more. All right, now I think you can see it, right? Yeah, pretty much, you can't see me, but that's probably a good thing. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to the open position. Now, if you notice, you see the tube moving you see it loosen because we've opened the jock chuck up we're going to go ahead go back to auto mode which will close it now we have to adjust this roller up all i'm going to do take my eight millimeter t-hex i'm going to push it up to the tube and then i'm going to let it drop just a hair i'm going to snug it up a little bit lightly and then i'm going to see can i spin does it spin free in other words it's it's not going to drag across the tube if that's the case, and I look at it and I go, yeah, there's, that's pretty close. I'm not even probably a 32nd of an inch or, or a millimeter or so below the tube. Now you're gonna to wanna to use the T-handle part because you really, really do. Well, I can't really get it on this one right here. All right, I probably need to go to a different setting, but I'm not gonna do it for this video. Anyway, I've tightened that up right there. If I did want more clearance, look, for instance, if I wanted the bolt a little bit lower so I could really put some dog bite on that, on that screw, then I would just basically go to the next lower hole. All right, so we are good to go now. If we open it up, you can see we're loose. If I tighten it back up, we're tight. So we're completely adjusted. Now, let me just show you a couple other things before I forget to do it. One of them is, remember we talked about earlier, you could set the machine up with a level. Now, you can't really see it, but that level is doggone near perfect. And that's because, how could it not be? The way we adjusted it, right? Now, once you've got it adjusted, let me move back the pedestal. I moved it out of the way so we could do the, you could see a little bit better on the other stuff when we were doing the backside. All right, what you could do, we know this chuck is in the right position now, height-wise, for the stabilizer. What I was mentioning earlier is you could take a dial caliber and run it down Right, come on, baby, get on down there. There you go. And then you could just measure it and say, all right, I'm going to write that number down somewhere, put a little post-it note or whatever, and if I ever have to move the chuck up or down to do, let's say, a, a large operation or a different kind of stabilizer, I just simply got to return it back to this number. Now, that works pretty good, but there's actually an easier way to do it. Get yourself small, like, quarter-inch threaded rod, six-millimeter threaded rod, something like that, and then just place it there and have a couple of nuts or one nut and adjust it so that the nut is going to rest on top of the aluminum and then the bottom is going to rest on top of the frame and then you can either double nut it to lock it in place or tack it next time you need to adjust your chuck literally get your you know your little gauge you just made 
place it right there and adjust it until that gauge, until it contacts the gauge perfectly and you're at the right height. So I want to throw that out. That's a, a little bit of a time saver right there. Okay, I think we are good to go to start cutting. Let me go ahead and reposition the camera so that you can see. In fact, actually, we're not going to be able to have the camera. We're going to walk around a little bit while it's cutting so that you can see the transfer balls opening and closing while it's actually operating. We've got our tube loaded. However, the machine, the XR12 in this case, does not know what size tubing it is. So we're going to run a wizard. Let me go ahead and fire that wizard up right here. And we're going to go to what's called the round tube probe. And what it's going to do is it's going to find the center of this part so that the machine knows where the rotational axis is. Now, I have other videos on these wizards specifically showing you how to do this one here. So I'll just describe it as I go. All right, I've got the wizard open. I'm going to put the OD of the tubing at 2.375. It's two inch pipe. And I'm going to say generate. And what that does is that copies a, it creates a program and it copies it into the run portion of the interface so that it can run and find this. Now, what we need to do to run that is we need to bring the torch over to approximately the middle of the tube. Doesn't have to be perfect. Eyeball is more than good enough. All right, now, notice when I dropped it down, I did not hit the stabilizer. And whenever you put a stabilizer into the machine, you want it as close to the torch as you could possibly get it with it out actually not hitting. Now, this particular XR12, this is the machine that we run all the time demo in here, that's why it's a little dirty, is equipped with the BLE attachment. Just now the BLE is basically tilt head, and this is how we cut angle iron structural. So if your machine doesn't have the BLE in it, then the torch is much further back. It's much, much closer to the drill back there, which means you can move the stabilizer closer to the torch that way. So keep that in mind. You always want the stabilizer as close as you can to the torch without actually hitting the torch. Okay, now we've got our program loaded. We've got our torch is just above the workpiece, eyeball centered this way, and I'm going to hit the run button. There she goes. So she's probing the top. Now it's looking for the, the center line axis. There we go. And then she'll spin real quick and it'll come back and it'll verify that it's in the right position. We're done. Now you have to do that only when you change sizes of tubing. So let's say you got a big job. We, we got a machine in, um, at um, doing a job for Universal Studios, it's already done, but they were cutting 500 sticks, this is what I, I was told by them, 500 sticks every 24 hours in an XR6 using this exact setup right here. They never had to do any of this again. Once you set it up, tell the machine, hey, I'm doing, in their case, I guess it was inch and a quarter pipe, um, it's for the railing of that new roller coaster. So they go, I got inch and a quarter pipe. Once the machine knows that, you just load part after part after part. It doesn't matter what you're cutting out of that part as long as it's the size that you ran the wizard on. In that case, theirs was inch and a quarter, ours is two and three eighths. All right, so we know that now. Let's go ahead and hit the page up button to raise the torch up. And I'm gonna go ahead now and I am going to lower the head a little bit. There you go because it's a BLE, you know. BLE has complete different video directions. It's, it's, a, it's a whole different ball game, but I want to lower it a little bit. Normally, if you don't have a BLE, you wouldn't, be, you wouldn't have to do anything like that. All right, so we've got that in position. Let's go ahead and load up our program now. So I'm going to import the NGC. I've got a little short part here we're going to make. And then we are also got to go down in the lower left under plasma configuration, and we are going to tell it we're cutting mild steel. We're cutting, um, we're going to say 3 16ths because, yeah, that looks like about 3 16ths wall right there. So we'll cut 3 16ths, and we're using a 65 amp consumable. You set all that under the select plasma settings or the um, plasma configuration. So we say OK. So we're good to go. Next thing we need to do is, I believe, can you see the end? Let's rotate the camera a little bit. We, you're going to need to see the end of the tube. 
We now need to run the machine down the tube. Go ahead. Am I in it? Yep. Well, I don't need to be in it, but the machine needs to be in it. Let's go ahead and lower the torch down. And what we need to do right here is just move near the end of the tube. And I'm going to set it in about, you know, quarter of an inch in from the end. <clears throat> Generally, you're always going to be cutting from the end this way. So just figure that's something you automatically got to do. Now, once I've got the torch in position, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, I'm going to, under the offsets, the quick, um, uh, quick work offsets, I am going to click Y0. And what that does is the Y axis of the machine, which is traveling this way, we just told the machine that's your zero point. So the programs that our software kicks out is going to reference that Y zero point. So we told it. If we told it it was here, it would have cut that part out right there. So we really wanted to get to the end of the tube. So there we are. I'm going to go ahead, raise up the torch for a minute. At this point, we need to, let me see. Yeah, okay, yeah, we've already got our program loaded. I forgot I did it. Um, so anyway, I think we're good to go. Let me go ahead. We're going to hit the run button, but I'm going to have to walk around with the camera a little bit to show you what's going on. Hopefully it'll be a little easier for you. So let's cut this sucker. Let's come up to the top left, hit the run button. Now right here, you'll see the green coolant coming up through it. That is injecting the coolant into the tube. Now notice I've moved the gantry away from the end. The reason is I wanted you to see that. I wanted you to see it open and close. All right, here we are, we're cutting. Now the difference between cutting with cooling and not cooling, or not cutting with cooling, is night and day. You always want to cut with coolant if you can. Now let's come over here and watch these transfer balls. See them coming off? We're going to cut two of these parts. Notice also that the coolant drastically reduces smoke. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Takes a minute for the coolant to, to get out. Let's go ahead and pull up one of these parts. Notice with the coolant, I could actually hold it in my hand right out of the machine, but look at the edge cuts on that. Just beautiful, beautiful cuts. That's the advantage of running coolant. All righty, I think we've showed you enough with the machine. Let me go ahead and um, put the camera back on the tripod and uh, I'll give you a couple of closing remarks. Well, we've reached the end of the video. I hope I've explained pretty much everything that you would ever need to know about stabilizers, but there's a couple other things I would like to mention. One, if you're cutting round tube, no matter the length of the part, you're always going to want to use a stabilizer if that tube is under three and a half inches as a general rule. Now the reason is some stabilizers do not want you to cut a very long part. For instance, our um, our structural stabilizer, you do not want to cut a 20 foot part with a structural stabilizer. The reason is with round tube, we can activate the standard lifters that are in the machine and they will support the long lengths of tubing hanging out. So with this setup, you could cut a 20 foot piece or you could come along and cut those little baby pieces we just did. So that's something you need to know right there. The other thing is too, um, the XR6 setup can see it's over there is the exact same XR series machines there's absolutely no difference than what I just showed you between the two machines the other thing I would like to say is if you could please watch the overview video of stabilizers because it does talk about a couple other things in general um, that you may be interested in now look for the other videos such as the square stabilizer video the how to set the limit switch stuff like that you can generally 
find these things. As we create all these tutorial videos, we're putting them up to our support page. There's a link on our support page. So if you go to JD2, the number two, dot com, go to the support tab, and this is where you're probably going to find them, um, or you should be able to find them. Now, they are also all posted on YouTube. So if you search for XR, you know, rotary cutter, XR, something like that, XR 12, you're probably going to find a whole playlist and then just basically find the one that you need to know. Anyway, that's all I've got for you in this video. I really appreciate you taking the time out and watching it. I hope I've helped you if you've got the machine. Um, anyway, have a great night or day, whatever it is. Thank you again. Goodbye.